Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained. And as requested, today we'll be taking a look at the Parasite unit featured in Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain, which was an action adventure stealth game published by Konami. The Parasite Unit, also known as the Skulls, were essentially an elite unit of Parasite enhanced super soldiers commanded by XOF Commander Skullface. Considered to be his most fearsome assets on the battlefield, the Parasite units were generally given high priority missions that the average XOF soldier couldn't handle. The unit all received their powers from a species of parasite discovered by Code Talker, which destroyed most of their cognitive functions, causing them to become mindless zombies that were at the beck and call of Skullface. Despite this, they did have a limited capacity for speech, as seen when they first encountered the playable character Venom Snake, where they could be heard yelling his name in a rasped tone. The parasites that granted them abilities primarily resided over their skin, maximizing their physical capabilities, including having them move at such incredible speeds that it appeared as though they were teleporting to the human eye. It also enabled them to sustain significant damage in combat, as well as giving them the power to leap so high that they could disappear into the clouds to regroup. The parasite unit wore technologically advanced suits that could be used as camouflage to appear as a member of a different organization, and when engaged in combat, they would operate in groups of four. The unit also had three different variant types with unique capabilities called the Camouflage Unit, the Mist Unit, and the Armor Unit. Now, the Mist and the Armor Units were infused with Metallic Archaea, which was an artificially modified subculture of Archaea created by Code Talker that enhanced their abilities. On its own, it could be used to instantly oxidize any metal it's applied to, and it was able to contain and consume radiation, as well as other radioactive waste. Alternatively, Metallic Archaea could be used to make better and faster mechanisms, increasing the reaction time of machines and allowing them to lock and release their individual joint parts at will. As a result of Metallic Archaea, the armor units had increased defensive capabilities, now able to create metallic boulder-like projectiles and metallic spike structures that erupted from the ground as a shield. On the other hand, the mist units were able to create corrosive gas and clouds that turned any metal to rust within seconds due to the effects of Metallic Archaea. It was also heavily implied that they could form their weapons such as machetes and sniper rifles out of their own body mass due to the transformative properties of the modified subculture. It's also important to note that both the armor and mist units were capable of infecting any soldiers in close proximity with Archaea, turning them into puppet soldiers that were also under the command of the notorious Skullface. <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll see the bigger picture eventually. Despite their combative prowess, the units also possessed a number of weaknesses. For starters, the parasites on their skin were drawn to fresh water, and contact with heavy amounts of it would force the skulls to absorb them, leaving them in a vulnerable state. They also had difficulties distinguishing between snake and a balloon decoy, in part due to their limited cognitive abilities as a result of being combat zombies. In addition to this, while infused with metallic archaea, they were actually vulnerable to being harmed by anything that was coated with it, including their own weapons. An example of this can be seen whenever Venom Snake parried one of their blows, after which he would proceed to stab them with one of their own machetes, which was capable of penetrating their armor. The Camouflage Unit Unlike the other two Skull variants, the Camouflage Unit was an all-female variant that didn't possess any Metallic Archaea, which meant that they had no special abilities other than those given to them by the Parasite Enhancements. Each of the Camouflage Unit soldiers possessed an augmented scope covering their eye, a sniper rifle, and they all had the ability to cloak their bodies to the point of being nearly invisible to the naked eye, a feat achieved via the Parasite variant altering their skin's pigment. While they did possess some of the same abilities as the Mist Unit, including their Misty Presence, Enhanced Agility, and Speed, they were also somewhat frail in comparison to their Parasite counterparts, requiring only a handful of headshots to bring them down. In addition to their sniper rifles, the Camo Unit also sported machetes with corrosive edges when engaging their enemies in close combat. The Mist Unit now, the mist units were generally assigned to handle retrieval missions, often ambushing their targets when they least expected it. This variant of the skulls had bright glowing eyes and true to their namesake, their presence was marked by a thick cloud of mist that appeared around them. When unprovoked, they normally lumbered around like zombies, but when engaged in combat, they were extremely agile, possessing the ability to jump at heights and distances that made it appear as though they were flying or gliding for a short time. The Parasite Enhancements enabled them to outrun horses and most vehicles, and their enormous leaps meant that they could not only catch up to a fleeing opponent, but they could also appear ahead of their targets to catch them by surprise. In addition to being able to form weapons out of their body mass, they could also release clouds of metallic archaea from underneath their parasite-infested skin, which, as mentioned earlier, turned those it infected into puppet soldiers. 
the armor unit. While the armor units behaved in a similar manner to the mist units and seemed to have the same weapons, they were much taller and bulkier in appearance. The armored units also had a unique relationship to the modified subculture, which enabled them to generate archaea over their bodies which acted as a special type of armor that increased their durability. Similar to their ability to create a toughened armor around their bodies, they were also able to channel archaea through the earth, summoning it out of the ground as a means of both defense and attack. The one that covers. The parasite that lives on the surface of the skull's bodies is what gives them their power. But they can only subsist within a human body. Once transplanted into the medium, they will eventually die. Well, that's all for today, folks. Big thanks to all of you guys who requested we explore the parasite units featured in Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content. And if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film and Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. Hurry! They are coming!